Today we're making some Santa decor. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. For the first project, we're going to do Santa's truck. This is a little sign we're going to make. So we're going to use these window clings and I got these from Walmart for 98 cents. So I thought that was a really good buy. And they are from this year. So hopefully you can find some of these. I'm going to use some of this tinsel garland that was left over from something else. I'm going to use two of these wooden ornaments and a sign from Dollar Tree, which is pretty on its own, but it's the perfect size for what I want to do. I'm going to use Mod Podge and some Martha Stewart paint in Sandcastle. Some paint brushes, and you know I always add other stuff. So we're going to take the tag off. We're going to take the hanger off. And then I'm just using a very thin spatula to go around underneath the edge of the border and I'm going to get also underneath the paper and just kind of start to pop these off. I don't want to break them and they're not real wood, they're just MDF. So I don't even know that I could repair them if I broke them. So after the edges come off, the paper peeled off. Pretty good. I think it came off pretty good. Sometimes it's a challenge, but this time it was fine. So that's going to be the front now. That's going to be the back of it's going to be the front. There we go. So I'm going to take some of that paint and one of my favorite brushes and I'm going to go all over this board. One coat and I'm not going to make a solid coat. I want this to look like it has a little age. Like a streaky paint. And that looks good. I chose this color paint because it happens to be the same color as the background on that on the cleans. So now I'm taking some of this paint, this Waverly, and it, it's like a glitter paint. It's supposed to be, but I honestly couldn't see the glitter. And I did shake the bottle up, so I don't know if it has more to do with technique. I just finally started adding like a bigger amount and just not smearing it out so far. Kind of leaving it kind of chunky and thick and just working in small sections at a time. And then after two coats, this is how it looks. And it does not give me the look that I want, so I'm going to fix it with glitter in a bit. Here's my daughter's little nutcracker that she made. All of it by herself with no help from me. She always likes to share her goodies with y'all. Okay, so now we're moving on and I have chosen this one. Santa in his truck with the little reindeer in there. And you can see that the background on that claim matches perfectly to the paint that I put down. If you don't have the paint though, you can get your scissors and just trim along and cut that extra off because um, it will show up if you put it on white. Now I'm going to use my glue stick and I'm going to put it down on here, making sure that I need enough room on all the sides to get the border back down without cutting my picture off. And I'm just going to use the Mod Podge squeegee and go over this window clean. I love the pictures. They're so vintage looking to me. Okay, so now all of those are dry. I'm going to take some Mod Podge. I'm going to add on all of these little pieces of border trim. And the holes where the hanger was, I just filled it up with that paint. And it dried without leaving a, you know, a big mess in there. So I'm going to put this on top of it so that I can add my glitter to it. But you can use school glue if you would like. Got to put it on kind of thick to get the glue to stick the uh, glitter to stick to it, um, just in my experience. Now I always start off by sprinkling a tiny amount and then adding more if I need to add more. I try to conserve my product. Helps save money when you do that. Also by doing it on a napkin, you can just take that napkin and pour it in another container and then you'll have some red and green glitter. Once it's dry, you can start putting your pieces back down. And I did kind of give them a dry fit to make sure that they were going back in the right places. I'm going to glue it down and hold it because sometimes when you paint that MDF stuff, it kind of bows a little bit. So I'm just going to hold it in place for a minute. I did all the edges and now I'm going to move on to this pretty glittery Merry Christmas piece. And I'm just cutting the hanger little loops off because we don't need that. And I think I like it like this. Now I've got this glittery poinsettia. I'm going to cut the little stem part off so that I can get a flat surface, but I'm going to add glue down in that hole and around it so that it doesn't slip and fall apart. 
they're made in layers in other words and the layers will come apart if you're not careful I'm gonna take the same Mod Podge and then go around my Christmas tree because I had so much fun with the glitter on the border that I decided I'm gonna add some to the sign you certainly don't have to do this if you don't want to if you don't like the glittery and the busy and the all that you don't have to do it that way you could certainly just have left it like it was but this is all about vintage inspired so I'm gonna show you my interpretation of what that looks like so I'm gonna shake this can on here with the green then I decided I didn't have enough of an opening there so now I'm shaking it down got a really thick look now I tap it around, bop it around on the corners to make sure that paint sticks. Turn it upside down over a trash can or a bowl, depending. And then it will look like this. I'm going to go over the wreath that's on the front of the truck with the same green. Put it on pretty thickly so that my glitter will stick down. Same process, and I'm shaking the, the heck out of it shake it off and then that's the coverage you're gonna get if you want a lighter coverage then just put it on thinner you know you don't have to put the glue on as thick for the Mod Podge I want to do a little bit of red on Santa's hat so I just put a little Mod Podge on there and you could always put a little pom-pom for the ball if you wanted to you could do a little pom-pom on the reindeer if you wanted to make him Rudolph instead and you can take a dry brush and kind of push the pieces of glitter around. You can brush them off or you can push them back into the glue, whichever way you want to do it. And when you get it cleaned up, it'll look like this. And then you can get like a, a stiff stenciling brush and that also works really well to pick those little pieces up. The hairs are so compact, they just kind of get caught in there. If you're worried about the glitter when you're finished with it, you can always spray it with some Mod Podge or clear um, sealer. Okay, so now I know that I want to put my flower in the corner, but I want to leave a little gap so you can see the bird in the top of the tree. He's peeking out of there. And then for this, I was thinking, how am I going to do this without getting glue all over the place? So all I'm doing here is just quickly adding little dots of glue, just lifting up a tad to add the glue here and there where it will be stable enough, but you don't see glue squishing out all over the place. You know, gonna keep it looking neat. And then there's a lot of space on that C to connect it down to the side. So here is my silver glitter and I decided to go ahead and put some of that silver on the bumper of the truck and then on the lights. There's a little sign area there. I left that one open. Didn't put any on that. And remember, the more glue you put on, the thicker um, it's going to be. This did not have a sprinkle top on it, so I was really dumping a lot of it out. But don't worry. I saved my product. Dumped it into a bowl. I can use it again. This is how it will look. And you see the truck already has little snowflakes on it. It was made that way. I think that looks cute like that. So I've decided that I really need to continue that silver along the running board of the truck. So I'm going to put it right here. It's the little step part. And then I put a little bit on the back bumper that is extending out back there. Right there. Okay. And then this is how it will look. Now, I don't want to have this as a hanging sign. I want it to stand, so I'm just going to take some building blocks. Now, these are bigger than the ones that came from Dollar Tree, but you can certainly use the ones from Dollar Tree, but I, you would probably want to do two of them side by side so you have enough of a flat surface to balance this sign. It's not heavy, but it potentially could be top heavy depending on what you put up there on the top of your sign. So you want this to be stable and this certainly is stable. Now I am going to make two different kinds of bows. So this is a shoestring bow, just as like when you shoot, you tie your shoelaces. So I'm just going to pull those little ears 
or the loops of the bow, cut the tails down, and I think this will be cute right there on the front of the wreath. Gives some more dimension and interest. And I think it's cute. All of this vintage inspired stuff is just playful and I just, I love it and I have so much fun doing it. So let's continue and let's make another bow. We're gonna make this one for the reindeer. So this is like the awareness sign. Then you're gonna squish the loop right into the tails using a little bit of my red cording here. I'm gonna hold this down and tie a double knot in here to hold this tightly in place. And it needs to go right in the center so that the loops end up being the same size. I'm gonna cut off the excess because we don't need that. Trim the little tails down. And here's your little precious bow. That one's tiny. We're gonna put it right there on the reindeer's neck. How festive is that? I think it's cute. I know some people are gonna tell me it's too busy and not very realistic, but you know, it doesn't have to be. It's magical and it's all about fun and imagination and, and childhood goodness and innocence, right? Yeah, it's those feelings that take us back. We like that. I think all of us pretty much like that. All right, it is Subscriber Appreciation Month, all month of November. I wanna say thank you and give back. So screenshot this so you'll know what you need to do so that you can have a chance to win a prize. So the next is going to be an ornament duo. I'm gonna take these two ornaments that I showed you in the beginning, gonna take that same paint and give both of these one coat of that sandcastle paint. You could leave these plain if you wanted. You could paint them a different color. Same thing as the background on the other one. But I like that this is going to make those edges just disappear whenever you put your cling on it. They need to dry. And when they do, look how perfectly these clings fit onto these ornaments. I really adore these. And I love making ornaments. They're so fun. All right, I'm gonna use that same glue stick and color that in. And although it's purple, it does vanish when it dries, so put as much on there as you need to. If you need to go all the way to your edges, you can certainly do that. And when it dries, nobody will know. I'm using that squeegee again, getting all my bubbles and lines out because I want this to almost appear as though it was made this way. If it was an ornament that was made to look this way rather than being thrown together or handcrafted. From the middle to the outside to make sure our bubbles can escape. Then I'm gonna take some of this shimmering silver and this is gonna be what I use for the top of the ornament. This is a little part where you hang your ornament. You can use gray if you wanna use gray here or you don't have to paint it at all, but I knew I was gonna use silver glitter on the top so I didn't want it to, you know, anything to show through and look cheap. I wanted it to be nice and richly colored. So now I'm just going to use a little brush from Dollar Tree and I'm kind of stippling it on, just kind of pouncing it up and down. And I'm going to do it on both of them. All the way to the little edge of the line there. Try to keep my lines kind of straight there because that's where our glitter is going to cling. And I'm going to tap some of this off. I really need to put this in a salt and pepper shaker or something because I am making a teetotal mess. So I'll just transfer a little bit over onto the other ornament, tap it off, use my finger to push it up and press it down. And just using my fingernail to clean the edge up a bit. And I think, I think it looks good. What do you think? All right, so now I am going to add some snow. I'm using my Mod Podge in the same process, just kind of pouncing that up and down. Now, I still have some of that very fine powdery snow, but I chose not to use it this time because I wanted to use something more like what you can get at Dollar Tree so that you can see what it would look like using the Dollar Tree snow. This is like plasticky types of flakes. Um, not my favorite to work with, I can tell you that. I'm actually putting 
clumps of it and pressing it into the Mod Podge to make it stick. And I think that, you know, it does stick down pretty well. You, I don't know. I would say you might want to do more than one layer of it, but probably by trying to brush anything on, you would be making an even bigger mess. So maybe not. Maybe just leave it like this. But I just use a dry brush to clean off, you know, the center of the picture. We're going to do the same thing with Frosty. Go all the way around your edges. And this also seals your clean onto that board. Now I'm going to be patting this down. Same process as before. I'm using the remnants from where I did the other ornament and just pressing those down. And this is how it looks. Now we're going to make hangers. So I'm going to take that tinsel and this came off the Santa boots. If y'all haven't seen my video where I made the Santa boots, this is what I took off. And this is why I save everything. I think this makes the best little hanger. I'm going to just twist it on the bottom and then push the twisted section up and over. So now that loop is kind of locked in place and nothing is going to slip out. And we'll do the same thing again with the red. I'm going to hold it at the bottom, twist those pieces around, push it up and down and it's going to kind of lock that into place. It's also going to leave you a thicker section to put your um, hanger down in the glue. So take that little knotted section of it and press it down in there. And do the same thing with the reindeer ornament. And press that one in place. Protect your fingers now if there's any question. You can use pipe cleaners here too if you need to, or you could use some type of cording. This cording I got from Goodwill. But you can find pretty much anything anywhere. What you're looking for is something that is going to be the same or a little bit smaller than the width of the ornament that you're using because the idea is to have it sit there on the edge. So what could you use here? You could use jute, you could use baker's twine, you could use more tinsel on the edge if you wanted to. You could paint the edge a different color if you wanted to. However you want to do it is going to be absolutely fine. You could even use yarn here if you wanted. We're going to go all the way around and I'm just putting it as close to that edge where the snow is as possible. Working around the corners, I'm going to just hold it in place a little longer. You can always pull off any extra glue that kind of makes a mess there. So you got to kind of work with these corners. Let this, let a section dry and then move to the next section. Let it dry and then press the cord down and let it dry. And then once you get all the way to the top and every bit of it is covered, you can take that cord and just cut it off. Just cut it as close as you can and if you need to add a little glue, just go ahead and add it. And there are those two little cute ornaments. You can watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. The next one is Santa sign. So we have two signs here and here we are with this paint again, the sandcastle. We're going to use some more of this tinsel. This little fall sign from Dollar Tree and I'm using this one because of the green. And then this is a vintage hanky and an embroidery hoop or a blanket hoop or whatever you want to call it. It is a 10 inch hoop. It's thick. I got this from the thrift store, but you can pretty much get them wherever you buy craft supplies. I'm going to add this down in the middle and the goal here is to get the paint on the inside of the ring and on one outer edge. Because this is going to be on the inside, you don't have to paint the outside, you'll never see it. I'm going to add this hanky right down. Well, it's a hanky or a napkin, probably a napkin. And I'm going to press it down so, so you can't see the outside at all. What you can see is the painted inside and the edge. I'm going to screw it down so it's tight and then I'm going to go around and try to cut off just a little bit of the extra because it helps me to be able to work with the fabric if I don't have so much to move around. I'm going to put little slits around the block where it attaches 
and then glue that section down. Then flip it back over and begin to glue it to the frame. So you can see here that I'm just gonna put some glue here and work in small sections and then just pull and press that down. Protect your fingers. My glue, for whatever reason, is not really hot right now. Uh, I can't feel it, uh, probably because it's freezing cold. So I'm just gonna continue around here, pressing, pulling, pressing, almost making little darts or little tucks in here so that we have a nice, uniform, clean-looking edge. Continue around all the way until you get back to your starting spot. And then, when the glue is cool, you can take your scissors, lay them sideways, and begin to trim off any excess so that you can neaten up the back. I'm just going to grab that brush. It still had some paint on it. I'm going to go over the edge here and on the back. But this step you could really skip because you can't see it with what I'm going to do. Just an option. Now I'm going to use the tinsel on the inside, so I'm starting in the bottom center and I'm going to put the glue on the frame itself. I'm not aiming to put it on the fabric. I don't want a bunch of mess showing through. I don't want you to be able to see a lot of glue on the back side. So I'm just going to tap it down. And continue around doing the same thing. I'm aiming toward the frame part rather than the fabric. But it doesn't matter if some gets on there, but you know, it's going to stick better if you're sticking it to the wood, I think. Continue along until you have this completely all the way around there. What else could you use? You could use rope. You could use yarn here. You could use a different colored tinsel here. You could use fabric if you don't have what I have. You can use a fabric from the Dollar Tree. All right, so I'm gonna go over to this little ornament that I chose to use because it looks vintage-y. Cut the hook off, pull off the old bow. We're gonna richen it up a little bit. So I'm gonna take a little strip of this beautiful ribbon. I'm gonna glue to the front. I'm gonna measure how far down I want it to be. Cut the excess off. These are the little things that come on the inside of those little rectangular signs. I always keep stuff, so I had them left, and they happen to be the perfect width, I guess you could say, or fullness, or they're the perfect size. Yeah, that's what they are. To um, Once you put it in there, it's equal to the depth of the frame. I'm sure that made no sense at all, but thought I would share it with you. This is how my brain works. Okay, so I just measured to make sure I was in the center based on the bottom where it is attached. I've glued it on the back side. Now it looks like it's hanging, right? That's the idea. Going on to the third bow I'm showing you in this video, I'm just looping this over on itself again and again until I have three loops on the left and three loops on the right. Taking another piece of that red rope or twine, I'm going to tie it in the middle. The first time if you tie it, you can move that knot back and forth until you get it where you need it to be. And then you lock it in with that second knot. Tied really tight. You can kind of fluff out your bow a little bit, see what that's going to look like. I pulled the tail out and I'm pulling out the three loops on each side. You know, if you didn't want to make a bow, you could always use Christmas bows that, you know, that you use to decorate your boxes and packages. You could use that. So right on the stem of that ornament, I'm going to add the bow. By the way, I have no idea where this ornament came from because it was thrifted. But I know you can find really cute stuff at Dollar Tree that would probably work great and Dollar General and Family Dollar. Let's not forget those other dollar stores that are really good. We don't have only a buck around here, so I can't speak to that. All right, I'm adding some glue. I'm going to pull this down as it would be when it is hanging, when it is standing up. I'm going to press it down. 
it will go through the fabric. Be careful that you don't glue it to your table. I lifted it as soon as I did it. And then I'm just going to add a tiny bit more glue on the back side to help stabilize it. We're going to use the inside of the box to set this down. So six inches is going to be my center. I'm going to add my glue down. I put a little mark on the box right in the center so that I can get that little gap in the frame even with it. And now it should have the same amount on each side. You see the sign is going to stand in there. I'm going to cut some floral foam so that I can elevate the box. I need this to be as high as the sides of the box because we're going to cover it with snow so it's almost going to be like a little platform. I'm just measuring down then I'm going to cut the strip. I'm going to flip it over and cut it into strips. I don't want to see my ink. I'm just testing to see how much I'm going to need here. Then I'll start adding my glue. I know it's a little blurry but I think you kind of get the idea of what's going on. I'm going to press it down in the glue and then on the sides also. Then I'm going to roll up little pieces and tuck those in the front and the back so that there's no gap between that and the sign that we have it sitting on. And then you can just glue it down where you need it. Now we have a little snowy place under there. Taking some of these little trees bottle brush trees and some of these little tiny pom-poms. I'll take the bottoms off and sometimes they'll screw off, sometimes you have to cut them off. Depends on where you get your little mini trees from. These little pom-poms fit in here with no glue and they fit snugly in there. So, go for it. If you want to use something else, you'll probably have to use hot glue and you'll need to use your cool temp because you can melt the little stems on these little brush trees. I'm going to fix these little tails so that they're not fly away and they don't stick down in Santa's face. Give that little bow another little fluff. Then I'm going to take, these little trees are a little, one's a little bit bigger than the other one. I'm going to place them down where I think I want them. And then I decide, you know what, I want to add a little bit more. So I'm moving the white trees over and I'm going to add some of these beautiful green trees. Same process, we took the bottoms off, and I love how that kind of frames out all of that white. I've got some little beads from the thrift store. It's like a little, I don't know if it's a star shape, what you would call it, and I put a white little pom-pom in the center of each one, and these are going to be the stars for our Christmas tree, or the flowers. They kind of look like a little poinsettia, don't they? These little plastic miniature ornaments are also vintage. They came from the thrift store as well with a bunch of other little ornaments that you will see me use in the Victorian video coming up. So I've added green to one side and a red to the other side. And now I have some of these old ornaments. I'm going to choose some. This one's a cute little drum. They're wooden. I'm going to add these down here and there. So now we have like little vignettes on each side. Here's a bell. So we have a drum and a bell, and I like this little mouse and the penguin. So we're gonna add those in there too. One on each side. And he's holding little symbols, isn't that cute? So you could stop here if you wanted to. But I wanted to add something to cover up my little messy edge there. So I grabbed that red tinsel and I'm just going around right along the edge of that, um, what is now our base, to just make a nice clean line there. I'm going to trim it off and then glue it down. And this is how this one is going to look. There's so many ornaments in that bag. I have so many cute little things that I found. So I'm going to give you an overlook of all the ornaments we made. If you're new to my channel, I'd like to say welcome. If you've been here a while, welcome back. I hope you're enjoying these vintage inspired videos. If you are, I would love it if you would share the video. And if you're not already a subscriber, I would love you to be here to learn how to make beautiful crafts on a budget. If you've enjoyed the video, a thumbs up is a great way to say 
Thank you, and I enjoyed it. And the secret word is going to be truck. And the prize is going to be some twinkle lights with a remote, and you're going to get some Christmas crafting goodies. Yay! Thanks so much for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon.